Hi, I'm Martin from Clifton Cameras. I'm Toby from Zeiss. We're here in the Forest of Dean and we'd like to talk to you about the Zeiss range of digital thermal imagers. So first things first, why might you use a digital thermal imager? Well, these pick up heat sources. So what that means is that they're incredibly useful for picking up heat sources coming from, from birds, mammals, etc., which might be hidden away in dense vegetation. Um, it doesn't have to be at night. They work 24 hours because they're working off heat. So nighttime or daytime. If your target's in vegetation, if it's hidden in a reed bed, for example, you can use one of these to actually locate and become aware of the presence of things that you would just remain hidden otherwise. So if we look at the range itself, they basically do, there's four ranges, there's a DTI-1, DTI-3, DTI-4 and DTI-6. Now within that, there's two models within each of those ranges and they differ just by the focal length of the lens that's on there. So if we look at the DTI-1 first of all, which is this one. Now the DTI-1s, they're really nice and light and compact. Two models, DTI-119 with a 90mm lens and DTI-125 with a 25mm lens. The 19mm will give you a wider field of view. The 25mm has got a bit more reach on it, puts you a little bit closer to your target. Now one thing that all the DTIs share is this symmetrical layout of the controls on the top. And the beauty of that, apart from the fact that it's easy to access them, doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, equally easy either way. The DTI ones also allow you to view in eight different colour palettes, so you have white hot, black hot, red hot for example, whichever you prefer. So that's where the range starts. The next one up from DTI 1 would be DTI 3. So Toby, why yes. might you move up from the DTI 1 onto the DTI 3 in your opinion? So when you first pick up the DTI 3 and you look through it, the first thing you're going to notice is the display. In the okay. DTI 1, you have an LCOS display, and in the DTI 3, you have an AMOLED display. A much brighter, sharper contrast, you're going to be able to pick out the heat sources more easily. Okay. It does share some features of the DTI 1 with hot tracking and picture-in-picture, -picture, but you can access them on here via shortcuts okay. that you don't get on the DTI 1. Right. So that allows you to access more of the thermal at an easier rate. In addition, the DTI 3 has got movement alert. Movement alert, that sounds quite interesting. How does that work? So that works when the therm when you have the thermal and you're looking through it, and if a, for example, a deer is walking through and you might not okay. recognize it at first, the thermal is picked up, there's a heat source moving, and it will alert you there's a, that the heat source is moving and it will show you where it's moving. Right. So you, you've, got, you've got less of a chance of missing your potential subject that you're looking at. Okay, I understand. No, that's great. Thanks, Tony, Toby. Thanks for running through the DTI-3 for us. So we've covered DTI-1 and DTI-3. So the next one in the range is the DTI-4. Okay, so when we look at the DTI-4s, there are two models. You have the DTI-435 and the DTI-450. So that's a 35mm lens and a 50mm lens, respectively. Now, Toby, I know that your favourite of all of these... Is the one you're holding. Is the one I'm holding, that's why I picked it up, is the DTI 450. Yeah. Could you tell us what it is about this one that makes you like this yes. one so much? I mean, straight away with this, with the DTI 4, is that from the, compared to the DTI 3, it has a 640 sensor. So you're able to pick up more with that sensor, a more detailed, more detailed image with okay. that. It shares the same shortcut features that we've spoken about with the DTI 3 as well as it does have a smart standby function where if you, when you're holding it and you if you were to have this on a strap and you were to put it down it will recognize the angle that it's it, it's now at and it will go onto a standby to save your right. battery life okay the dti3 also does have that what i also love about the dti 450 especially is how thick the focus wheel is okay so especially i've used this a lot over the winter when i've got gloves on you've got a nice right. thick focus wheel the full the 450 can detect up to 2,600 meters of a man standing at that distance right. in terms of okay. the height of the, of the mammal you'd be looking at. Fantastic for when I'm birding because I'm not only going to be looking in a woodland area like this, I could be looking out over a salt marsh area and there could be some snipe a distance away and you're able to pick them up with this. This is always in my pocket when, <laughs> when I'm birding and I've, we were talking earlier, I've shown you long owls that I've you used did. this for. Yeah. I've used this for woodcock and some of my friends who do a lot of bird ringing, we've used these products as well 
and the DJI 450 just all round giving you that extra punch with that 2,600 meter detection range. It's a fantastic product. I was really impressed with some of the images that you showed earlier. We had long eared owls, woodcock, yes. etc. I think for some of those species, things like like woodcock, snipe, jack snipe, absolutely it's, fantastic. Let's say the deter your thermal is a detection tool. It's going to yeah. detect those heat sources, and then that's where you use your binocular or your spotting scope. To then lo to then locate and identify, unless of course it's a, it's pitch black and at night. But thermal's really we've already spoken about enhancing your birding experience. Yes. Thermal enhances it in a completely different way because you're seeing stuff you just would not see at other at other times. Bittern, snipe, you just at times you wouldn't see them. Yeah, and something thermals allow that. Something like bittern, for example, skulking in a reed bed, for yeah. example, even in daytime, you still wouldn't know it was there. No. But I remember we spoke before. You said you'd have a lot of success detecting bitterns in yes, exactly yeah, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah, of Hamwell in, in some Hamwell, sort of special. Somerset, that's yeah. right. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Thank you. So that's DTI four, which means there's one left to go through, which is the top of the range, which is the DTI six. So just like the DTI four, the DTI six has a six forty sensor. But when you look at it compared to the other models here, it does look a little bit different. So some of the key differences that you'll see on here, first of all, you have a binocular style eyepiece, so you can actually take that out, adjust the eye relief in the same way that you would do with a binocular, which you can't do with the others. You also have a scroll wheel on here. This can be used to actually adjust zoom, 10 times zoom with the DTI set, you'll get four times zoom on all the other models. And you can actually use the scroll wheel to move around the menu system as well. On top of that, you have a, a power saving mode whereby when you take your eye away a certain distance from the eyepiece, it will actually go into standby. That's really useful actually, because that preserves your battery life when you're out in the field. The other feature which the DTI 6 has, which is unique, which might not be immediately apparent, is that the lens, or two lenses, 20mm and 40mm, and the lens can be removed and swapped over from the other one. So you can buy this in DTI 6 20 format, or buy it in DTI 6 40 format, but if you then subsequently decide that you want the other lens as well, yep. additional lens, you can then purchase the additional lens and then you can swap over. The advantage of that is, again, your 40mm will give you some more reach, but your 20mm will give you a really nice wide field of view, which I think, Toby, we're talking about this, and that can be particularly useful for survey work, for example. Yes. So the DTR6, as you mentioned, is really good for surveying, and when, especially with the 20mm lens, it's got such a wide field of view. For those who are doing survey work, especially bat surveys for ecology companies, it means that you can survey the entire building that you're looking at, with that wide field of view. You're not gonna miss bats coming out of a separate area of roost that you might otherwise miss. Right. So that's okay. where that is helpful. They all have, all products have a tripod thread. So you can sit them on a tripod and you can record for as long as you like. We've already mentioned about the interchangeable lenses, but you also have, you can take out the battery. Okay. Unlike the others, which are all inbuilt, you can just take out the DJI 6 battery and then you can just slot in a new one. And if you want to carry on recording, then you have that ability to do that. So you could go into the field, you could have the inbuilt battery and another charge battery yes. ready to go. Yep. So just really quick and easy to swap It gives over. you that flexibility to keep recording. So if, if you've not charged your, your thermal up before you've gone out and you realise you've got a low battery, it's not the end of the world because you're gonna ha you've got another one in your pocket that you can then slot in Brilliant. and you can keep surveying. So it gives you that extra flexibility to keep surveying. Okay, no, that's fantastic. Thanks very much. So there you have it. That's a, an overview of the Zeiss DTI range. Hope you found this video interesting. If you need any more information, please don't hesitate to contact us or click on the link. And see you next time.